David Dobrik and Jeff Wittick are at it again. Let's talk about it. They're paying for all your hospital bills. That's a uh, that's gonna be fun when we get to that in trial. Because now said yes, they did. And he said yes, they did. And you were like, no, I can't wait my to expose sucks. Natalie's lies. She's next level, like like crazy. Well, here we are again. It was, I believe, a couple years, a couple years ago that Jeff Wittick was on an excavator in the water and he fell and hurt his eye. And he's part of the vlog squad. David Dobrik was there. And all this we covered months and years ago. Jeff Wittick ended up hurting his eye really bad and it was kind of like assumed that David Dobrik would help pay for some of the or all of the expenses and there was a lot of like back and forth where like he didn't like pay for it and it kind of just tore their friendship apart. And there was even a TMZ article out there where Jeff Wittick is suing David Dobrik for $10 million. Uh, and that was on TMZ, People Magazine. We'll throw up the little article thing right here. So here we are. Now, I don't think he got $10 million. You, you know, you get you aim high and settle low and things like that. But a lot has been brewing because Trisha Paytas had Tana Manganu and Jeff Wittick on her podcast and Jeff Wittick talked about David Dobrik. Let me roll you that clip. Yeah, I reached out to you. I hit you up because of your guys' podcast. I was like, you spoke so nicely of me. And you always really have. Mm -hmm. it, and, you know, maybe there were some times, you know, there in the beginning that things got a little ugly. But we were on opposite sides, you know? Yeah, I was drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> Do you think? Which is, which is, like, cult vibe? Because, like... <laughs> No, you were I'm just nice I'm, to me. I'm just a loyal friend. Like when I'm with my boys, if they have like an ex girlfriend or something that like you don't even listen to their side of the, the so like, embarrassing. You're just like, yeah, I'm gonna ride with my boys. You know, there's a reason why I'm here. You've always spoke like you've had my back. You know, you spoke the truth, and I used to think you were batch crazy, and you know that's just <laughs> I was. that's just how it is with that group. When you have somebody that's exiled, it's like, oh, they're bad. That's why they. You just spoke the truth. You know, you had something that you knew that was a big secret that I was keeping from everybody. And not like I was paid off to keep it a secret. I just wanted to keep it a secret because I was embarrassed. But that story needed to come out. And if not, I'd be in such a worse spot now. Like even, you know, this guy made his episode where he blamed me and I saw his true colors. And that happened like right at the end of the statute wow. of limitations to even do anything to take action and to get like rightfully, you know, we're fighting it out in court right now. But, you know, to get that, like I needed that. And that was because of you. You opened my eyes or I you know well then there are these text messages that got sent out by Natalie and the text messages do not make her look in the best of light although she was kind of checking up on him I think in my opinion she just wanted to check on him to get the tea I don't think she really cared for him but I but that's my opinion the thing is this guy sitting in the hospital and he's in the hospital and they're worried about the, an edit for the vlog or for some documentary and things like that and you know they want everyone wants to make themselves look good and they didn't like the fact that Jeff Wittig wanted to make his own docuseries about it. And it just got really messy between these friend groups. But also when the one and only time that David Dobrik talked about it with Jason Nash on their podcast, he basically gave the explanation of like, well, Jeff Wittig is too macho and I didn't know how to like really talk to him. Here's that receipt. I've never had a harder time communicating with a person than I have with him during this. Um, and... And, you know, it's for multiple reasons. It's for me f being bad at that, not knowing how to handle like such a serious situation. Um, and I also didn't know if you needed space. Like every time I would talk to him, Jeff is like a guy who like is very tough when you're to his face and is like, I don't need this. I don't need you doing this. Like I'm good, I'm strong. But then when you create that distance, it's like, what the f Yeah. He's not f now, not talking to me. And then like, when my other friends would go talk to him, he'd tell him, he's like, if I ever see David, I'm gonna beat his ass. Right. So it's like, and that happened multiple times for multiple different friends where he would like complain about this. So like, I wouldn't know, like, do you want to see me more so you can beat my ass? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't right. know. 
I don't know how to go about that. So when I look at that, I'm just like, man, come on, listen, somebody is hurt. Like this is a human person who is hurt. How could you not be like, I understand if you don't want to sit there and baby somebody and comfort them, but how could you not just pull out a checkbook and be like, let me help with the expenses here. Let me give you some money. Cause you know, he's very quick to do that. Buying his friends Teslas and stuff like that. Up paying for all your hospital bills. <sighs> That's a uh, that's gonna be fun when we get to that in trial. Because Natalie said yes, they did, and he said yes, they did, and you were like, no, I can't wait my to expose sucks. Natalie's lies. She's next level, like, like crazy. Sh that's something I want to avoid because it's a big part of the case. Yeah, she's scary. <clears throat> but yeah, the truth will come out. And you know, th it just looked bad. And it, li listen, when it comes to Trisha Paytas, I know that she's very problematic, and you know all that drama and stuff like that. But with that being said, even a broken clock is at least right once a day, right? So, Trisha Pages did say that somebody was gonna get hurt in the vlog squad, and it was true, somebody did get hurt. And let us not forget, let us not forget that Casey Neistat made a documentary about the vlog squad, and he was following them around that time to make his own documentary that got showed at, I think, a Cannes Film Festival, I believe, and it, I think it won an award, and that movie has yet to be leaked out. And uh, it makes David Dobrik look bad. It's not in the best light. And um, with that being said, I think Jason Nash doesn't really want to put out the film because it's really gonna really make David Dobrik look bad. And so he kind of kept it to himself, if that makes sense. But I think it's a great film, and I can't wait to watch it when it comes out. And all these people are making docu-series and documentaries about it, but I think the one to watch, if Jeff Wittick is in it also, is the one with, with Kate. Casey Neistat. I think that one's going to be, I think that one's going to tell the good, the bad, and the bottom line of it all. So those are some of the things that Jeff Wittick had said. And I was thinking like to myself, I was like, why is he being so vocal about it now where he's going on a Trisha Paytas podcast to talk about it? And I think maybe because the settlement is done, I could be wrong. So if you guys know, let me know in the chat, if the settlement is done, did he get paid and now he's able to talk about it? Or if he just covered the expenses of himself or they're waiting on trial and he's talking about it, I don't know. But I just think that David Dobrik, I don't understand how you can't just help a friend and be there for a friend because you have given away so much more and cars and prizes and gifts than I think what Jeff would have probably needed. And I think at the same time, it is a very difficult situation when I feel like Jeff Wittick really needed a friend and not so much money at that time. Although the money's gonna help, I think he really, I think he really needed to, I think David Dobrik really needed to like be a good friend and also back him up financially and be like, hey, like you were in this, I was here. I understand it's not my responsibility 100% like legally, but I wanna be a good person and I wanna take care of you and I wanna make sure you're okay. And I'm gonna pay for all this and I'm gonna walk you through it because you're my friend. And I feel like whenever I think uh, some lawsuit came out and David Dobrik was like, oh, I'm not, I wasn't in that, that's not my fault. And things like that, I just think that was just so shady to do that. And it made, really made him look bad. Especially because I don't think that, uh, David Dobrik thought it through that Jeff Wittick could ultimately spin off and just be as big as he is now. And I think it is sad. Like, it really is sad. I'm glad that Tana's there to be his friend. But, you know, David Dobrik hasn't really said much about it. And it is interesting when I see Jeff Wittick and David Dobrik at the same event. I think that's kind of weird when they got all this beef going on behind the scenes or animosity. I saw David in Vegas, like, six months ago or like four months ago, I pull him aside. Let's just have a talk. You know, like it's probably not, you're not supposed to do that. But he was like, I know why you're talking about you or why you're talking about me. You want me to respond? Ah. And I was like, I'm talking about myself and yeah, I'm living story. with you narcissist. <gasps> you think I'm talking about you to get a response? And when it happened, you know, a lot of people still stayed by David Dobrik's side because he was financially taking care of so many people. So they didn't want to like bite the hand that feeds them. And Jeff Wittick is over here like, hey man, I got hurt and he's not even helping me out. So if he did it to me, what makes it think he won't do it to you when you, if you're in your time of need? You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be doing what I'm doing than having to pay and just keep paying and paying and paying and push it. Oh, for sure. It'll, it'll probably get pushed years, you know? Oh my God. Wait, really? So what, like... 
realistically, like, how long can you push? You can't just keep dismissing things and stuff like that. You have to, like, eventually go to trial, right? Yeah, I hope so. It just it just looked bad. So, you know, I get, maybe they feel like they're closer to David than Jeff was, so they'll be better taken care of. But, you know, at the end of the day, Jeff Wittick, whether you like him or not, whether he's too macho of a bad guy or whatever the case may be, whatever that situation is, I feel like he's still a human person and David Dobrik still should have been there for him as a friend and financially too. But that's my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. I just think it looks bad on David. And and because of that, that's just one of the major dramas that David Dobrik got into. But because of that, it's really left a beauty mark on his career, like he left Jeff Wittig hanging. It really made him look bad. And also then you got allegations of, you know, inappropriate behavior. So, you know, I'm gonna go on this, not that, it's not, that's not today's video, but it doesn't look good. And I just wish Jeff Wittig the best, a speedy recovery. He's probably never gonna see the same again and things like that, because it's pretty scary. But anyways, let me know what you think about that in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next.